Good evening, everyone. We want to thank you tonight for uh, coming in on our conference call. And before we get started, I'm going to pray and ask God for wisdom and that he would give us kingdom revelation uh, to whatever it is that he's having us to speak about tonight and that we'll all be able to gain some type of understanding and, and, you know, to make our life better. If you will, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to be able to share in this conference call as we began to uh, increase and grow into the things and to the knowledge of the truth and learning how to govern ourselves and learning how to take charge of our life because you have given us that ability and we're learning how to embrace that. We're learning how to take that and use it to make our life better because when we make ourselves better, we're able to give of ourselves to someone else. And, Lord, we thank you for everything, and we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, tonight our subject is entitled, My Words Reflect Who I Am. My words reflect who I am. And I wanted to talk a little about that because we are, again, in a different world. I know it looks the same. It, you may feel that you're in the same place, but we have to understand that we are in a different world setting. Things are different, and we're in a place that words now are being spoken. I mean, people are talking. We're talking. They're talking, and sometimes, uh, you know, things are being said that's not appropriate. And, it's, and, and, and I believe that as we become more conscious, more aware of who we are and what God has put us in the earth to do, we also must be a, more conscious of what we're saying, why we're saying it, and does what, we are, what we're saying, does it benefit us? Or how does it enhance us? How does it enhance others? Now, for the last three sessions, we talked about uh, learning how to deal with offense. And we know offense is when people either say something to us that doesn't sound right or say something to us out of order, or maybe even perhaps they may do something to us that, that that's not in order. But also we have to be mindful of ourselves, what, how we say things, what we're saying, and why we're saying them. So that's what we're going to talk about uh, is our speech, how it reflects really how we really feel, how we feel about ourselves, how we feel about others. So when we're just sitting down talking, and when I'm talking about our speech, sometimes it's just general conversation. And you may perhaps be have been around a person, all they talk about is something that done happened years ago. That's all they be talking about. Anything they most of the things that they're talking about, they're talking about something that happened in the past. Or they talk about something that's maybe hurtful. And it's simply because really it reflects that they're still dwelling on the past. Are they talking about things that really, you know, you'd be like, I, it doesn't even make any sense. But anyway, let me, and I'm going to read tonight from some of the Proverbs of Solomon. And it says here, a person talks shows his faults. His talks shows his faults. And uh, what that really means is whatever I talk about, whatever I'm mostly, because most times people, they got this priority thing that they really talk about. It's either maybe their family or maybe they talk about politics or maybe they talk about uh, education or they talk, I mean, some people, that's going to be, you know that that's what they're going to talk about. But it says here, people talk shows their fault. It's like you can tell how well a tree 
has been taken care of by the fruit it bears. And you can tell a person's feelings by the way he expresses himself. And it says this, never praise anyone before you hear him talk. That is the real test. <laughs> and when I seen that, it just blew me away because I always have done that. I would just have a conversation, sometimes just a casual conversation with a person. And, you know, sometimes just asking them a few questions and, and just listening to how they respond. And it's not that you're judging them. It's about you learning how to pay attention because the Bible even says, out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. So a lot of times people are speaking. They're telling you right away who they are, how they feel, and they don't even know they're telling you. And they don't even realize that they are really uh, – Although they may look like they're one thing, but when you hear them start talking, you can almost tell what's really going on inside of them. And, again, it's not that you're judging them. It's like that. I just said, you can tell how well a person has taken care of that tree based on the fruit that it produces. Even the Bible says that. The tree is known by the fruit that it bears, and that's just a true fact. So when we are speaking and when we are talking, and that's why it's important for us to start investing from the inside because we don't realize how much of what we say reflects what's inside of us, even though we try to suppress it, even though sometimes we try to cover it. But when a person just starts just talking, just casually conversations, you will eventually be able to really sum them up by what they are really saying and what they are talking about. And it also talks about when we're speaking about talking and when we're speaking about uh, speaking out, it says this. It says, a, speak wisely, and you will get ahead in the world. Influ, influence, influential people appreciate good sense, and they will excuse your errors if they like you. So cultivate the soil and reap the harvest. In other words, what God is trying to teach us, as he teach us, he's going to start giving us wisdom. And as we begin to speak, we can go in places, not that we have to quote scriptures, we'll be able to share, and we are know when to speak, when not to speak, when not to be involved in certain conversations. And even if someone asks you about certain things, Although it was like I was with, I was doing an event with a with a, another young lady on Friday. There was so much negative. Uh, uh, it, it was such a negative environment. It was a good event, but because of what she kept saying, she kept blaming somebody for doing this. Well, they ain't got this. They should have did that. And she kept trying to get me involved, and I didn't say anything. Because guess what? I'm not going there. I don't want to be a part of all this negative energy. And later on, you know, I'm just listening. Like I said, you listen to how people talk and what they're saying. And mostly everything she was talking about, it was she was putting down somebody else. And finally, we just kind of had a little conversation about our life because I didn't know her. And she says, well, it's just me and my children. I'm, a, I'm just by myself, just me and my children. And I said, okay. And then I thought, hmm, 
I almost wanted to say, well, I can see why, because she was like pounding on everybody, everything, somebody, and I'm already knowing that I'm surely will be next at some point a time, but I did not feed into that energy. And later on, the person said to me before I left, they said, Miss Deborah, I really enjoyed working with you. I would like to work with you again because what I did, I did not get into it. I just tried to show her that, you know, let's not focus on that. And, you know, every time that person would bring about something, I just start focusing on something else and doing something else. But what I was, I said that to show that a lot of times when people are hurt and they got issues, you can hear it in their conversation. And if we got the right kind of energy, if we have dealt with our issues, guess what we can do? We can bring life in the midst of those kind of people and not continue to feed that, feed into their uh, anger or their resentment or their negativity. So when we speak, what our conversation, it, it releases what we're feeling inside, how we feel it. And it's all about how we're feeling about ourselves. And just remember what we've been uh, teaching and what God was showing us. Most of the time, people feel, say things to you because how they feel about themselves. And uh, let me see, and that's the uniqueness of talking on the phone instead of texting and tweeting. Because if you can, if you speak to somebody, you can detect if something is bothering them. But if you text them, you will not, it has no feelings. So you, you do not know if they are, whether they are hurting or not. It has no feelings. But in today's world, today we communicate through texting, through Instagram, through Twitter account. We are no longer speaking to each other. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gregor, for bringing that out because that is so true as we speak and we want to always stay engaged and talking and sharing because it also, it, it, it's, it's a twofold thing. When you speak in and you got that wisdom, guess what? And you got that peace and that love, guess what's going to happen? That's going to come out and people are going to hear it and they're going to see it. And guess what? They're going to love that. They're going to be drawn into that. Because most of the time, people conversation now is just, I've, I've been around people in the last uh, six months. I went into one of the places where I used to work, and I worked there, and I helped them out. And, and the conversation that I would hear people talking and the way they were talking and what they were speaking and the language that they were using it was like, oh, my goodness, what is this? But we're in that day and time, people, they just speak anything. They use a lot of profanity, and they use it as if it's just another word. But I like the part you said, never pray somebody until you hear them speak. To me, that is so profound and, and, and wonderful. A lot of times, you just look at the person, you already pray the person, and, and then when they open their mouth to speak, you say, oh, my God, well, what were they saying? I didn't understand what they said. It didn't make any kind of sense. So before you praise them, allow them to speak and express themselves, then you can praise them. Exactly. And sometimes it takes more than one conversation. And sometimes you can listen to them talking to someone else. I've been in the grocery store. I'm walking down the aisle. I hear the husband speaking to his wife a certain way, and vice versa. Sometimes I can be walking. You know, I'm not trying to get in their conversation, but, you know, they look like this. They look nice. They look like a normal people. But then I hear the wife going all up on the husband, talking a certain way. So if that person is speaking that way to their spouse out in the open, in the grocery store, can you imagine what's happening in home, at home? So, you know, I believe we got to make sure our words uh, are lining up with what's in our heart, and they are. And that's why I believe God is teaching us to kind of start being more conscious and aware of what's inside of us. And if there's anger, 
bitterness or any th- t- type of things in there that stops the flow of peace and love and joy, we just got to deal with it. Because if we don't deal with it, guess what? It's going to come out in our conversation. And today the world is so stressful that people will be people will come out in 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 a negative way because they are so angry and frustrated. So they, they, uh, when they speak to you, the tone of voice they be I mean, it will just project something negative sometimes because they are hurting. And just to think of it, uh, as Dr. Greg was just sharing that, I was out today coming out of the out of the hospital. And I could hear this man yelling loud. Um, oh my God! And then I heard him yell again. I mean, he used a, a curse word. And I was, I'm having to look over to see well, what's happening. Looked like he had backed up and bent his fender, his bumper. And because of that, he was so mad. He was just, he just said he was cursing loud jumped in his vehicle, slammed his door. And I'm like, well, what's all of that? It's kind of like, but that lets us know that people are under some a tremendous amount of stress and they're allowing things in this world system to get the best of them and it's coming out in their mouth, out of, their, out of the voice, out of the way they're talking and out of the way they're speaking. And today I was watching television. It said they compared two neighborhoods. In one neighborhood, the life expectancy is 86 years old. In another neighborhood, it's 66 years old. And the reason why it's that low is because of stress in one neighborhood. Stress will decrease your lifespan. And uh, Solomon also said here, he says, when a devout person talks, what they say always makes sense. Hmm. But foolish people are always contradicting themselves. Hmm. He said, when you find yourself in the midst of foolish talking people, look for some excuse to leave. Wow. But when you are with a serious-minded, when you're with serious-minded people, stay as long as you can. And what that is telling us, uh, even your surroundings, people are going to be either adding to your life or taken away from your life. And we have to be more conscious and aware that, guess what, foolish talking I don't have that kind of time. As a man, and you know what? You, it's your choice. But what he's saying, you might as well go ahead and make an excuse to leave because you ain't going to learn anything. You're not going to learn anything. But if you're around a serious-minded person that really uh, have learned, we have learning, and this is what we're doing, we're learning how to govern our life. We're learning how to take care of ourselves. We're learning how to manage life and stop allowing life to manage us. And uh, that was a little saying, and it said this here. It says, people with great minds talk about ideas. People with an average mind talk about events. And people with small minds talk about other people. (laughs) So... What we're saying, we don't want to get in the habit of talking about people, of saying things about people, even when sometimes, yeah, you can see things that may be not always right, but even if you're saying something, saying, say something to try to figure out how you can help that situation, not how you can put it down or putting people down or just find some kind of way of saying, you know what, how can I help them or Either you're saying something to try to uh, encourage them, and, and, you know, and when we do that, we're using our mouth to express the kind of person that we truly, who's inside of us, who we are. We're, we're really expressing who we are. 
when we do these kind of things because really if you don't want it, I'm like this here. I want for you what I want for myself. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to see nobody else suffering and going through. That's why a lot of times when I'm on the conference call, I talk about my own personal challenges because I know what I've been there. I know what it's like, and I can talk about it because I walk through it. And, and, you know, I love how God will help us. He will allow us to walk through things and allow us to experience uh, even hurtful things so that when we are we 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 overcome we won't ever do that to anyone else and he talked he also said this here he said when such people curse it is enough to make your hair stand on the its ends and when they start arguing among themselves all you can do is stop up your ears. It is painful to listen to them insult each other, and and to and it can lead to violence. And not I mean, only, I've seen it. Not only that, if they are using profanity in front of the children, the children also learn to use profanity wherever they go because everything, every word that that they utter becomes profanity and it shows so even when you're speaking you got to be careful what you say and how you say because remember this life and death they're in the power of the tongue so you can either you, you, you're either speaking life into somebody or you're speaking death into the, into their lives so we've got to be careful how what we say how we say when we say it And it talks about argon, arguing or arguments. It said, if you stay out of out of arguments, you will not sin so much. And I'm telling you, we have to strive to stay out of an argument because it can easily happen. You can just start debating, and before you know it, it can escalate. So I've learned instead of me arguing with an individual, I may confront them about something, but guess what? When they keep going and want to take it, I just speak the truth in love, and that's all I'm going to do. I'm just speaking the truth in love, and I'm going. going on, I'm moving on. We have to understand there's no, no reason to be arguing. Now, sure, there's going to be a lot of things you think, well, I got a right to speak about. I got a right. Let me tell you. Don't even waste your energy because even if you're arguing with someone that's not on your level, guess what? They ain't going to understand nothing you're saying anyway. The only thing they want to do is start using abusive language and start putting you down, saying words, saying things, and you know what? It's not even worth the trouble. I remember the Lord started telling me this, Deborah, never, ever give nobody that power over you and you got to never ever use these words again somebody someone made me mad no don't allow nobody to make you mad now if you want to get mad you just get mad on your own but never give that person that kind of credit that they made you mad no, you may not appreciate what they said, but I'm not going to get mad and I'm not going to be angry because guess what? You speak to me based on who you are, and I'm going to speak to you based on who I am. And a lot of time people are speaking and they don't know that uh, they don't really they don't know. They don't mean in a harm, but that's the way they've just been taught. Nobody have told them, you know what, you can resolve an issue without all the cursing and the pointing your finger and the fussing and the fighting. No, you don't, you, don't, you don't resolve anything like that. As a matter of fact, what we do when that happens, you just make things worse. And when we're speaking of arguments, one thing, I read this in the Bible, words are like water. They don't run backwards. You can't take it back. When you speak it out, even though it may be something you regret, 
So a lot of times, save yourself the trouble. Don't be arguing. Because when you start arguing and get hot and get angry, all kind of things will come out. Deborah. Yes, ma'am. I don't feel like I've learned anything. I feel like I've gone way backwards. I mean, it's not even arguing because I hold it in if I'm resentful at someone. I, I mean, everything you've, y'all have taught us, I feel like I, I, I haven't learned anything. I, I, um, I picked this child, this 14-year-old son, um, one of my jobs that I do. I pick him up at school. And he... I said, hi, and no, nothing, no words. And then he sneezed. I said, bless you, no thank you. And then um, he started telling me which way to go. That was the only time he talked to me. And then um, at the end, when he gets out of the car, no thank you, n- nothing. And it's like you said, it's a new generation, and it is. And there's just a lot of spoiled, selfish um, uncaring people, and so how do you not internalize? How do you, uh, what well, you just said something, not even let it bother you or whatever? I, I just, I seem to still get affected by all of it. I want to tell you first, we have to embrace that this is what it is. I think what really frustrates us because we're trying to make this world what it used to be. <laughs> And it's not. This world is not what we you, we were used to when we were coming up. Like you said, a different world, different generation. And it, when you don't uh, just embrace that, everything going to not make sense. Everything going to make me angry, just like driving. Today I'm driving, and I mean just driving. People was all up on my back. I'm already running. 65 miles per hour, they just all up on me, honking his horn. And I'm thinking, well, what is, I mean, I'm driving. And then finally he runs around me and and don't even give me enough space. But you know what? When he came around me, I'm already watching him, and I know he's going to do it. Run around me and jump right back in front of me. I already know he's going to do it. I'm not going to get mad about it because I already know that that's the way they do it now. And guess what? What I'm what I'm doing now, I'm driving. I used to drive trying not to hit nobody. You know what attitude I've taken? I'm driving now so I don't get hit. <laughs> so, in other words, I'm, I, I've been so used to me trying to drive so I don't hit nobody. Now i got to take another attitude. i got to drive now and watching everybody around me so they don't hit me. i got to get out of their way. There was a thing called the right of way. I don't have no right of way anymore. But but when you embrace it, you can better deal with it. But, you know, like you said, it's, it's a new generation. Embracing is hard. I mean, it's hard. I mean, it Dr. Is hard. Gregory says a little bit, of, one step at a time and everything, but, you know, you're making progress. But I, I don't feel like I'm making progress, and um, I, I just let everybody affect me. But, but Betty, you see, you are judging this kid here based on what you think he should do, how you will behave, or how you will respond. And you can Because people, I, people, everyone's not on your level. I, I mean, I, it's like you will go to the store or give somebody space when you're driving. When you get that space, it's just, they tell you thank you. They, they just drive by without saying thank you. But guess what? You cannot even, uh, I mean, Focus on that. You did the right thing and just leave it alone because guess what? As long as we all transition to a life, these things will happen. People are not on your level and people will not do things the way you as you will do it. I like what uh Dr. Gregory just said, uh that uh what he said. You know, okay, I just almost lost my train of thought. He was just saying, uh just just let them be because guess what? They ain't going to do it the way you think they're going to do it. And what you do, oh, I just got it. What he said, you just do the right thing. I like that because I had I to share. I, I shared that today with my hairdresser. She shared with me some very intimate things. And I just told her when I was going through that situation, only thing God told me, 
Deborah, just do the right thing. And if they <laughs> don't know, do I'll, the right thing, and if they don't do the right thing, it's not our business. It's not to exactly. Try to make them exactly. do the right thing, or think about exactly. them not doing the right thing, because then I get stressed inside, and it eats me up when I when I think of how they should be doing the right thing. Exactly, and and that and God told me that one day. He said, "No, you do the right thing," and He even said, "It I need you to learn how to do the right thing, even in the wrong situation." Even when the situation is wrong, you still do the right thing. And I'm told, I'm like, no, I'm, I, I'm, you know how you think, that ain't fair. No, it's not about that. It's not about that. It's about doing the right thing at all times. And not I was dealing that, with, I'm sorry? Not, not only that, whether they do the right thing or not is none of your business. Uh-oh, I'm speaking about us. No, we I, doing I, the right thing. The, yeah, I'm talking to Betty. Whether they do the right thing or not, okay, it's not, it's none of your business. And I your keep business. telling myself it's none of my business. It's none of my business. But it almost sometimes. Sometimes those are just words. Sometimes it really comes to heart, and sometimes it's just words. And I and I just can't overcome them their their rudeness or this way the way they're doing it versus the way I would do it is the way we said earlier it's just because I would do it one way I've got to let go of the way they're doing it and not bring it in because I because when I bring it in it's so stressful and I get so mad and and bring all that yuck inside and it's day after day you're hit with things like that and the question is, how, how does it benefit you when you get upset? Yeah, exactly. Your heart. It's, it ages you, yeah, and it makes you mad. Okay. And and what I I was also reading today, it's about like the world. <laughs> it was like it, I was reading something, but my what, what God was really giving me in that message, he said, ain't, it ain't going to never change. It was like I was reading something. You know how you just, uh, you praying about things, and you, you say the world never change. It's just, it is the world. Only thing needs to change is you. You have oh, to be so the change. Funny. Yeah, and I and it just, although you know you kind of know that, but when I was reading and I could feel that in my spirit, it opened me up to realize, why am I worried about things changing? All I need to do is, it was like he was showing me, why would you try to change the whole neighborhood? Why would I want you to change the whole neighborhood? All I want you to do, Deborah, is change what's in your house. I was like, oh, it's like, just clean your yard. Don't try to clean up the whole neighborhood. I don't want you. That's too much on you. All you need to do is just keep your yard clean. I'm just using that as an analogy. And when I seen it from that perspective, it's like whew, I could exhale because sometimes you feel like, man, look at this world, look at this, look at that, and you and you feeling all the stuff that's going on in the world and around you, and you like you you being affected by all this stuff because although you're not in it and this doesn't pertain to you, but it's kind of like I'm feeling it, you know, I'm feeling it. But then as I begin to just to, God was just beginning to show me, no, don't do that. Just focus on you. It was like I was just a little dot. He said, you can take care of that little dot. As long as you take care of that little dot, you're doing wonderful. <laughs> you be you become the change that you want, and that's it. You become the change that you want. And once you've done that, you're good to go because you cannot change anybody. No one would change until they decide to change. As long as they decide to change, but if they do not decide to change, they will never change. You see, as a man, as as a man think it, so is he. Mm-hmm. And let me just read this little first proverb. I read it earlier, but I want to bring out the key thing. It says, "Speak wisely, and you will get ahead in the world." Mm-hmm. So. Cultivate the soil, and you'll reap the harvest. In other words, just do the right thing, 
and you're going to reap the harvest. And, you know, sometimes speaking wisely, doing the right thing, you may not even see the benefit of it today. But you never know. That child may come to you next week and tell you something, and it will just bless your life about that very moment. So sometimes planting and cultivating, we don't see the the results right away. But later on, we are reap, we're going to reap the harvest. Something good is going to come out of it. So my thing is we just learn to do the right thing even in a wrong situation. Just keep doing the right thing. And, and the, word, the word integrity comes in. Integrity is with us. What would you do when no one is watching? As you do it and keep moving. Yes. You do it and keep and forget about who does it or who doesn't do it. As long as you've done the right thing, you keep moving. And I just want to read also this part in reference to uh, what you're saying. And I say this because, and I, I'm glad uh, Betty is being transparent because we do deal with these things. And we all deal with these things. And sometimes one day is better. It's not that it's one day is better than the next, but I think it's just our state of our frame of mind or the situation or the time that we're in right now. You know, because some days it's wonderful, and then tomorrow it'll be a whole nother way. And the same people, you're dealing with the same people, they'll be a whole nother way. But we just got to learn how to maintain ourselves and that's going to come with practice, just sometimes just got to show you how to deal with it, take a deep breath, or just, you know what, look up to the sky, or focus on something that is good around you. That's how I learned how to do it, because when he was telling me all of this, to me it didn't make sense. The Lord was all, had been talking to me about it, and I could hear it, but I'm like, that don't make sense, because... You know, I didn't never see nobody doing that, uh, you know, just do the right thing in, all, in every situation. I didn't see it even as a minister. i am got minister friends. Honey, when it came time for them to do what needed to be done, they didn't care about right or wrong. They did it. But God was talking to me. He was telling me something different. He was telling me different things, checking my motives. Whereas, I mean, wasn't nobody thinking about no motives. They did good things, but they had another motive in mind. But here God, I mean, I was just always one of those that God was just really, he was on me, helping me to develop a good life. So I believe that today that's why I'm able to share what I'm sharing and able to help others because he did that for me. God taught that to me. He taught it to me. He told it to me. And I just start obeying it, and I just start practicing it, of course. That's what I did at first. I didn't do it. I start practicing it. And sometimes when I practice it, you know, I was just doing it because he was telling me to do it. And I kept doing it because he was telling me to do it. And finally, it became a part of me. It became my lifestyle. So I want to encourage every one of you, whatever it is, even if it's like practice, just keep practicing and before you know it, it, it will become your lifestyle. Uh, it says here, uh, if you cannot get rid of your anger, you have no hope for forgiveness. You are only a human being. Think about it. Someday you will die and your body will decay. With decay. So give up hate and live by the Lord's command. And I'm not saying nobody hate anyone, but what I'm just saying, what he's just saying to us, we just let go. Don't even be angry. In other words, and we got to work on that. Just because realize one day I'm going to die out of here. So why? I ain't got but a few more days in this earth. That's how I kind of look at it. Although I know I feel like I got years, but I look at it because I only take one day at a time. I mean, I ain't got time for it anymore. He says, so give up the anger and hate and live by the Lord's command. 
instead of getting upset over your neighbor's faults, overlook them and mm. live and be happy. <laughs> I was like, wow, and this is the whole essence of life. Some things just overlook them because guess what? They have some issues of their own. So, you know, and we can pick and pick at it and talk about it and talk about it, and, oh, it just annoys me, but just don't let it do it. You take control and just overlook them and pray a prayer and keep moving. And, and when you say it, that, that's when you command your morning and you rule your day. And no matter what comes your way, you still you are still in control and you are still in charge. And that is the major key, managing our life. No, I'm going to be my own life manager. Things are not going to manage me anymore. People are not going to manage me anymore. Uh, the system ain't going to manage me anymore. I'm going to become my own life manager. So I'm going to decide. I'm going to choose. I'm going to make the difference for Deborah because I realize now if Deborah don't help Deborah, if Deborah don't do it for Deborah, it may not get done for Deborah. And I got to take the advice of Solomon. I'm going to soon die and this body going to decay. So while I'm living, guess what? I'm going to just take take charge and see about what needs to be done for Deborah. And that's about learning how to not to be annoyed with all this stuff. You know, and then sometime it'll annoy you, but let it do it just for a few minutes and let it roll on off your back. Don't get stuck in it. And I think this is why the Lord has been say, saying to us and giving us this word, keep moving. Don't get stuck in it. It may, uh, you know, hit you by surprise. Don't sound so pleasant. You don't feel so good about it. But guess what? Immediately release it. Keep moving. So it's very important that we, uh, our words, what we're saying and how we're saying them, uh, uh, we got to know that this affects the environment. And you can come into a stormy situation, and as you speak, if as you're speaking, things that you're speaking, and like I said, it doesn't have to be scripture. It could just be that you're talking about the weather, or you could be just talking about a current event, but you're giving words, and the words are soothing, and people are finding hope, and people are Feeling, feeling your words, the, the care, the love, because they are being expressed with love and peace and, and kindness. And I'm telling you, people are not getting that anymore. Everybody mad. Everybody angry. Nobody don't care about it. Nobody did. Nobody that. But I'm like, God, when people meet us and hear us speak, they're like, wow. A person that's speaking, and I can hear c- concern. I can hear the love in their voices. I can hear whatever they're saying. It's 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 like sweet music in my ear. And so God wants us to uh, be concerned about how we're speaking, what we're saying, and sometimes you feel like saying things. I know, and I can, and I'm like that. Sometimes I want to say this, you know, with me and Gregory living in the same house. He a man, and I'm a woman. Sometimes I want to say something, but I learn no, I don't even need to say that. No, no need to even bring that up because if I bring that up, then something else may come up. So guess what? Let's just table that. Let me get my mind on something else. And I'm sure he probably feel the same way. I ain't going to even mention it, he'll say. <laughs> I'm not going to mention Because sometimes just mentioning something that, you know, it doesn't pass anyway, ain't no sense in talking about it. There's nothing we can do about it. But sometimes it's very, Go ahead. Sometimes it's very, very lonely and unsatisfying 
to be the only kind person and to only be have you know the the person with the kind words it's 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 lonesome it's 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 hard sometimes it gets it gets old well in that case and i know what you're talking about because either you're going to be that or you're going to be a part of the crowd but uh, again when you don't you don't have to participate with that because sure cuz a lot of time people just do it to fit in but that comes to Janie when you start really loving yourself when i say loving yourself i'm not saying just the word start learning how to enjoy yourself because when you start enjoying yourself after a while you'd be like Mm-mm, i'm hanging out with me today and it, I, I don't it's something about it when you start really loving yourself as you start in loving yourself is about you just dealing with anything that you already know that I shouldn't be feeling like this. I shouldn't be doing this or whatever. You start dealing with it and you start overcoming it. And the more you overcome it, I remember when God was helping me with those kind of things. I said, Lord, this, my life is like an onion. You know, if you ever start peeling the onion, you can keep peeling it and layers and layers and layers. When I first start cooking, I wonder, when do you really get to the real onion? Because so many layers. And but then that's how how your life becomes. You just keep peeling it, keep peeling it, keep peeling it. And the more we peel, even at this point in my life, guess what? I'm still an onion. I'm still peeling back and getting rid of stuff, you know, and 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 refining myself. Because guess what? As we continue to live, we continue to encounter situations. Sometimes you encounter a situation that will bring out something in you that you didn't even know you had that in you. So, okay, now i got to work on myself with that. So when you start really loving yourself and enjoying who you are and what you are becoming, you'll start start spending more time inwardly versus outward, if that makes sense. So when she said she's lonely, it's our mind telling us that we're lonely. If, If we... Like you say, if we really start loving ourselves and we don't put these negative old habits of saying I'm lonely and just say, wow, I get to spend time with myself. If you change the whole attitude of it, then you won't be lonely, I would, I guess. That that is so profound. That is so good because, you see, if you enjoy your own company, because guess what? The only person you can trust is yourself. And you know that you will not hurt yourself. So if you fall in love with yourself and say, you know what, right now I'm just keeping my own company, I'm playing my music, I'm doing what I want to do at home, you would not feel lonely. Sure, you want yes. you want the company of somebody else. Don't get me wrong, but by being sure, no, you I'm want not, the I'm company. not lonely with myself. I'm lonely when I'm with other people. I'm, I'm oh, wow! 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 <laughs> and, and see, and see what, see what, see that's how it is. Isn't that amazing? How is it that all the people around, but you're alone? Because actually, they don't even, they can't even help you. They can't even speak into your life. That's just what we're saying. They, they ain't got the right words. So you need to find an excuse and say, I gotta go, y'all. <laughs> I gotta go be with Janie. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Exactly. Because it's a waste, really, it's a waste of your energy. Uh, because, and uh, uh, you know, and remember this, Janie. Sometimes you, sometimes why you don't do it because you're afraid of meeting new people. So sometimes you're afraid to leave because of what they think. And sometimes we feel that oh, we've been with them so long. Uh, uh, how would I be able to do without them? Trust me, when you leave that set. And this is how life is. Every level, God gives you new people. Every level that he takes you to, when he causes you to leave one group, trust me, there's another group. they waiting on you. They've been waiting for you to get there a long time. And when you find that group, oh, my God, it's going to be so wonderful. And eventually, you may even outgrow that group. It's kind of like school, you know. Sometimes you you get elevated, you get passed forward. You got to keep moving. You got to keep moving. 
But when you choose to be a recluse, how do you meet people, you know? And when you when, when you, you choose to just stay in your own little world, how do you meet, meet people? You can meet people by going to by going even by just just by walking or going to the park or going to the mall or going grocery shopping. You can meet people anywhere or in churches. You can meet people anywhere. Well, let me just tell uh, Janie, Doctor Gregor, how I meet people. And uh, my cousin and I, she may be on the conference call. That's Rosa. Uh, we can be out somewhere, and um, she, she, she and I, we out in in the store, and uh, we just walk around. And you know, with me, I'm doing what I'm doing, but I'm always look. I don't know. I just got. I'm just a people person. I watch people, and um, one day, uh, there was a gentleman in the store, and he just happened to look. He says, "Hey," I said, "Hi, how you doing?" My cousin, she and I together. She's single, and I said, yeah, how are you doing, sir? Are you doing all right? And then I'm just speaking about the day, how's the day? And my cousin, she done walked on away, and I'm thinking, you know what? You're the one single. Why ain't you staying over here just asking and talking too? And, uh, and then she said, well, I don't talk to people like that. I don't say nothing to people like that. And then God told me to tell her, you know what? You have a closed spirit, and what that means is, not it's a negative thing, but sometimes we guard ourselves because maybe we've been hurt in the past or we've been let down. So we put we put a guard around us. No, the Lord done already said, I got a fence around you. I've got a protection around you. So if God got a protection around you and you too got a protection around you, which one are you going to use, yours or God? So sometimes be a little bit more open. Sometimes you may be just seeing people or some, it's okay to just say a little word. And sometimes that it may strike a conversation, it may not. And not that you're looking for someone, but it's just many opportunities. People are looking. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes people will say something to you. Don't just answer the question. Just enjoy the time because guess what? You, don't, you ain't looking for nothing from nobody. You, it's like I ain't looking for nothing. I just want to share word of, of conversation, fellowship. And I, and another thing that I have learned to do is learn to do something different. How do I do something different? <laughs> I decided this this uh, uh, January last month. I say I, I I'm almost sixty years old. I never learned how to swim. I say I'm going to go to the pool and I'm going to take swimming lesson. And I've been there. I met some nice people. But you know, they're just my friends while I'm swimming. And after that, I'm done. And you know what? That's just how it is. I've met some wonderful people. And some, I, you know, just com- conversing with them, I could really just maybe take it to the next level. And then some of them I already know right away, you know what? It ain't going no farther than here. But people are all over the world. People are everywhere. Everywhere you go, everything you do, 95% of our life is dealing with somebody else. So did you learn how to swim? Uh, I'm still working on it. Uh, As a matter of fact, I'm having a problem with breathing in and out the water. I just haven't mastered that part. But you know what? I'm going to keep going, keep moving. (laughs) Because I, I felt like, man, this ain't going to work for me. I could hear the Lord say, no, Deborah, just keep moving, keep going, and I'm just going to keep going till I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, learn, and like I said, just try to go to something that's a little bit different because sometimes if, we if we're not careful, we're still around the same people all the time. Right. It and, might be a ball game or going to the movie. You never know who you'll meet there. Or just going out to eat on your own I mean, at a restaurant. You know, you could be people anyway. And sometimes you may just can volunteer to go somewhere, do something. You just never know. People are all over the place. And there's a lot of good people are in the earth. There's a lot of widows out there, but there's a lot of good people still left. And they're looking for people like you. <laughs> You'd be amazed. A lot of good people looking for good people just like you. 
because they want good friends. I'm telling you, people looking for good friends. You could, it might be at a noisy home or at a hospital that you go to. You never know. I mean, but there are people all around you. I'm gonna I'm gonna come pick you up and I'm we're gonna go out and we go I'm we're gonna just start Hey, how y'all doing? Y'all doing all right? <laughs> 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 I tell you, I don't meet strangers. Nobody's a stranger to me. <laughs> even even my husband them say, There she and my cousin says, Oh, there she go talking again, talking to somebody. Oh, there she is. She's always talking to somebody. I just do it because I believe that I it's it's like a lot of time I learn things from people and sometimes they learn things from me. Either way, I believe when it's all said and done, they're going to learn something or I'm going to learn something. All right. But as we before we end, I want to share that it's it's our journey in life, and a lot of things we're having to do. We just got to try to unlearn, and we got to learn how to let go of what we think we've been, we know, and we sh- and things should be. Because when you are walking, as God is teaching us how to walk now, we got to kind of just go with the flow, whatever comes. Well, I'm not saying we we sh- we are agreeing with it, but what we're doing, we got to learn how to adapt to any situation that he put us in for the moment. And just think about it this way, even better with the child that you're dealing with. Isn't it a blessing that you don't have to do that all day? <laughs> it's just for what whatever hour you got to drive them home or whatever. Just think on it that way. <laughs> Baby, you only and, don't be in my. I, I need to just think of it as a job and the money I'm making, and and not g- figure it out. Just I, I don't need to figure it out. I just need to mind my own business. Yes, and then guess what? It's only for a certain length of time. And guess what? Just think, you don't have to take that home with you. <laughs> yeah, it's only go. thirty minutes. I was, it's I start building it up, and it starts snowballing, and the children of this day and this and that. And it's just, it's, <laughs> if I would just stop it, nip it in the bud before it starts snowballing and mm-hmm. mind my business and and don't try to figure out the children of today or this world or all that kind of stuff. Because I tell you, you'll never figure it out. And, and guess what? Tomorrow, that same person be laughing and talking with you. You'd be like, okay, what happened? Guess what? Just, I'm telling you, just, you, we can't figure it out and can't stress over it. Yeah. I was just going to, it just came to me that that's what, don't ever try to figure anything out. That's the problem. That's, that's the problem. problem. <laughs> Trying to figure things out. That's yeah, the, exactly. I, I spent my life doing that. And yeah, analy- and guess- analyzing and the situation and figuring and, and and guess what else God taught me many years ago that really blessed my life. He said, Deborah, start living with no expectation, especially when it comes to people. He said, stop expecting. Cause you know, a lot of time I was expecting, I was expecting people to treat me right. I'm expecting you to do that because I did this. And I start dealing with people with no expectations. And when I start taking on that attitude and taking on that mindset, I stop getting hurt. I stop getting disappointed. I stop being being uh, feel, feel like a failure because I expected them to do this. I had done all this for them, and I did. I was expecting them to treat me like this, and I was expecting them to do this. So what I do now, I just live my life with no expectation. Whatever you want to do, just do whatever you want to do, you know, because when we do live our lives with a lot of expectation, expecting people to do so, expecting people to act a certain way, expecting this to happen, expecting that to happen, and when it doesn't happen, we just set ourselves up for failure. Either we feel like we are failures or we experience uh, disappointment, and now we got to deal with all these crazy emotions. So what I learned to do, you know what? I ain't going to put my emotions out there with that. I'm going to just whatever be, it will be. 
And wanting wanting it to happen the same as expecting, if you know what I mean, or just as bad as expecting it to happen. Long exactly. Just- exactly. Because guess what? Although I want it, and it doesn't mean that uh, I won't get it, but I, even though I want it, I just learn to just want it, but I don't get all into it. I don't put my emotions and feelings into it because if I don't get it now, because I used to be like that. I was trying so hard, and I done did everything to get it. And I didn't get it, and, man, when I didn't get it, I went into a state of depression. I went into a state of, of feeling uh, bad about myself, feeling like I was a failure, feeling like I just can't never get nothing right. And, man, I would just beat myself up, and I and, can't and, do that and anymore. Feeling angry and, and anger. Don't forget anger. And Exactly. <laughs> Angry at myself, angry at somebody else, angry right. at the world, angry at right. the job. And you know what? I done did this. I'm doing all this cause, so they can give me this. And then guess what? They gave it to somebody else. And now I'm looking like, dog, oh, I can't believe it. And now I'm mad at everybody. And I want to file a complaint. <laughs> no, I ain't doing my, I ain't doing that no more. <laughs> no. And that's a part of us managing our own life. I'm going to manage my life. And I know these are the things that I can do to help myself. Learning how to live expecting nothing from man. I believe God and I know God is take care of me. And whatever uh, whatever I'm, I, that I'm facing, I just learn how to accept it and say, God, you know what is best for me and just help me to get through it. That's that's a good topic, managing your own life. Yep. Mhm. Okay, and I'm going to take the call off of uh, mute. So if anyone else would like to share, you're welcome to. Uh, okay, anyone else would like to uh, share or, sh- or say something before we end the conference call tonight? I okay. just thank God for the word. As I thank um, God for the word, and I thank Him for y'all praying for me. And just keep on praying for me. Yes, I ma'am. You. Thank you. Love I you love too. You. And, and y'all said some really good words. To, lots of wisdom. There was lots of wisdom tonight. Uh-huh. Thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you because I know you had a long day today, and I really appreciate yes. it. Yes. Thank you. Okay, if that will be all, um, I'll just pray for us. That, um, and Dr. Gregory, would you like to share anything else before we? No, I, I'm good. Go ahead. I'm good. Okay, uh, gracious Father, we thank you tonight for our gathering, and thank you, Lord, that we are able to share with one another, and Lord, get more understanding, and Lord, helping us to be mindful of every uh, thought, every minute of the day, everything that we're going through during the day, help us to be conscious of it so that we would not get caught up in the snare of anger and frustration. And we thank you, Lord, that the words that we've received tonight will also cause us to be more aware of what we're doing and what we're saying and how we're feeling. And, Father, we love you and we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good night, everybody. I love you guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. night.